All right, it's time to talk about databases. Now, I just want to kick off by giving kind of like a broad conceptual model here of how your bubble application actually looks, right? On the one hand, you have your app, right? On the other hand, you've got your database. Okay, this is obviously is not like an exact technical schema. As I said, this is just a model to help you kind of understand the bigger picture. So in your app lives all your elements, right? And all of the logic of how your app should actually function. And your database predictively houses all of your data, okay? Now, there's a relationship between the two in that your app is going to be asking and sometimes sending or saving data to the database, right? Where it's going to actually live, where it's stored, right? This is the memory, the memory of your bubble application, okay? And your app, when your app retrieves data, okay, then your database is going to send it and populate your application with it. So you can kind of think about your app as like an empty shell, okay? It doesn't actually have any life to it, okay? It has to be populated with all of the interesting magic and all of that life from your actual database. So just take Twitter as an example, right? Every Twitter profile has the same structure, okay? We've got like this banner image up the top, a logo, a name, some other information down here. Then we've got like a list of tweets. We've obviously got some other tabs over here, right? If I go to another Twitter profile, if I open up the AirDev profile, right? It's exactly the same. Structurally, it is exactly the same. So the only thing that's changing is actually the, the data itself or the values in the page. This banner image can take any image that we give it. In the case of Twitter, every time that a new profile is loaded, then you're just loading the image associated with that profile. You're just loading the description associated with that profile. This app over here doesn't itself hold any of that data. It just holds the structure and to actually fill in the content, it has to ask the database to give it some content, okay? So that's sort of just like the big picture here, but how do we actually make that work in our own application? Let's just create like the simplest app that we possibly can that needs a database. So something like a, a notice board, a public digital notice board, right? So what I might do if I drag this button down a little bit, extend this group, okay? Turn this into a text that says something like, you know, create a notice, all right? I'll drag my button in underneath here, change this to something like post, okay? And then I create a way for our user to add some, not, some text, some text content, okay? That can be our first case for some content that we wanna save into our database. So, to get information from our users, okay, we use input type elements. And the one that we're gonna look for right now is this multi-line input, okay, that's gonna let our user add like paragraphs of information if they want to, okay? So here's our multi-line input. I'm gonna double click on it and as is a good habit, I'm gonna rename it to our multi-line input notice description. Okay, I get a placeholder value. That's you know just a visual cue to the user to type something. So I can replace that with whatever you know. Please um, give some information. That now you can see like as soon as I start typing, okay that placeholder value goes away, okay? So now we wanna set up some logic that when this button is clicked, okay, we actually want to save the value of this multi-line input in the database. So to do that, I'll just align this so it looks a little more tidy, okay? We will remove that condition that we created in the last video, start edit workflow just to open up that workflow tab. We don't 
need two of these events anymore, right? This is the stuff that we already created in the previous videos and we were showing and hiding the group. So we can remove that stuff. We can remove that expression, remove that action. And now we want to have an action that takes the value of that multi-line input and saves it in the database. So everything that we save in the database has to exist within the context of a, a, a thing, right? We can't just save that text in the database like without it being associated with anything, right? We actually have to go down to this data section here and go create a new thing, okay? And that thing is going to be, in our case, a notice. So we don't have anything defined in the database yet. We can click here to create a new type, but what I'll do because it's a little more clear what's going on is actually come over to that data tab, okay? And then in this new type, I can actually create our new data type. You'll notice, of course, we have already one data type here, a user, right? All Bubble applications come with user, user data type by default, and it has a few default fields here, and we'll, I'll, I'll get to fields in just a moment. So just forget about this user for a second, and let's just focus on our notice. So our new data type is going to be a notice. That's where this this uh, value from that multi-line input is going to exist. So I'm going to create that, okay? And now I actually have the ability to create a field on the notice where this is going to live. So let me just sketch this out so it becomes clear. We are wanting to create, I'll do it over this side, a notice, right? This is our notice, right? This is something that's going to be living inside of this database right here, okay? Now, think of this notice like a folder that is going to contain many different sheets of information, okay? It could contain sheets that are holding like text values, it could hold some number values, it could hold images, right, it could hold all kinds of different things, okay? But we need to actually define, well, what are those sort of like sheet categories that exist within the folder, all right? So within that notice, right, we're going to have a field which is called, in our case, the description. Right, and it's actually in here that we're going to save that text value, right? So from our application, right, we've got an input, right? One of these elements is an input, all right? So from that input, in our case, this multi-line input here, we're actually taking that value and we're saving it within a notice, okay, that's not a very clear arrow, so I'll draw it over there. We're saving that value within the notice description. So in the context of Bubble, what that looks like is creating a new field, right, which we'll call description, and we have to give that field a type, okay? So this is what I was talking about before, where you can save all kinds of different values within your, 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 your data things. So in our case, it's just gonna be a text, a simple text field, okay? Now that we've created that, we can come back over to our workflow tab, right? And now we can actually select our notice and determine what is the field that we wanna set that multi-light input value to, okay? So we've only got one field, that description field. We're just basically connecting it up now. We connect it up with that multi-line input description's value, okay? So we're taking the content of that multi-line input and putting it into the description field of the notice that we are creating. So, well, let's just, you know, let's just trigger that. I will say, you know, again, hello world, this is a notice, if I click post, right, nothing really seemed to happen on the page, but then again, why would it? We haven't actually given any instructions to do anything visual on the page. What I can actually do is come back over to this data tab 
And under app data, I actually have a window onto the actual database and all of the data in that database. So I can go to all notices and you'll actually see, well, Lord and behold, there's actually an entry in here. That's the entry that we just created, okay, with the description field and this created and modified date dates are set by default, right? If I go back over to the page and I say, you know, another notice and click post, well, now if I refresh this view, you'll see now we have another notice living in the database. I can't even get rid of that altogether and that'll just create an empty notice. Well, a no rather it will create a notice, but there's actually no description field filled out. So the right way to think about this is that you're actually creating several of these notices living in the database, right? Here's a notice, here's a notice, here's a notice, right? All of these individually are actually being stored in the database. All right, but each one of them, of course, each one of them has its own set of fields, right? One of them, of course, is our description, right? But it can have any number of fields. So it's the database where all that information really lives and it's the application that sends it there. Okay, so that's how we can create new data things, right? Um, in case that wasn't clear, bubble calls every data, you know, thing that you create a thing. And in the wider programming world, they're called objects, okay? But you can think of them as like the wider sort of like category of thing. You've obviously got users, right? So there's gonna be multiple users in your database, but they're all of data type thing user. Okay, so that's how you get information into the database. What about getting information out of the database, pulling out some information and displaying it to the user? That's what we're gonna cover in the next video.